Welcome back. Welcome back. This is Rod Powell here with your number one source for education, inspiration, and motivation on what I feel is the number one most underrated career opportunity uh, in business today. That's a career in the insurance industry. And today we have, man, I, we got a, We got a heavyweight in, in, in the building. Uh, our guest today is a, a financial educator. He is a best-selling author, has authored four books, uh, which we'll talk about today. Uh, he's the founder of Aqua Financial Center in Woodland Hills, California, and uh, really is on a national campaign to spread financial literacy. Uh, he's one of those people that once you meet him, you never forget him. Uh, his recently released book, Cracking the Rich Code, is an Amazon bestseller. Uh, it features also, him, along with himself, Tony Robbins, uh, Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank, Jim Brett, but really today is all about him as he was recently honored as also one of the top 100 global leaders in the insurance and finance industry. So you want to listen to the words that he is going to share today on this interview. I want to welcome to the You Should Get a License podcast, Mr. Hold on, I got to say it right. The financial gentleman, Mr. Rory Douglas. Uh, man. Roy, how are you doing today? Man, I am doing amazing, Rod, man. I, I listen, words can't express, man. Uh, how um, appreciative I am to be on your show, talking to you. Um, I have a, a lot of respect for you, man. I just recently met you a little while back through one of my colleagues, man. And uh, I'm just so excited about being here today and, and really excited that I get a chance to talk to someone that's pretty much cut from the same cloth that I'm cut from in the same business with a wealth of knowledge. And uh, I'm excited, man. So just thank you for having me. And uh, I hope that the words that I share today is going to help a lot of your listeners and those who are looking and listening. And, and that's what it's all about. But man, thank you once again for inviting me on your show. Absolutely. And, and thank you for, you know, finding the time. I, I know you're very busy. And, and for those who are in uh, this industry, th this time of year can be one of the busiest of the year uh, as we approach, you know, the, the fourth quarter. Um, this platform, as you know, Rory, is, is for those individuals who, you know, are, are really looking to learn about, you know, in, insurance, you know, they're at the beginning of their career, or, or maybe they've, they went to a recruiting interview, or maybe someone called them, and they're just getting started, and they're wondering if this is really going to be uh, what, what was pitched to them in the interview room when, when someone was speaking to them. And there's a lot of different areas and, and segments of this business. Uh, that people join. I always like to start before we even get into your background, which I'm really excited to talk about. Um, before we go there, I want to talk about your area of specialty. So I know you're a financial educator uh, and advisor. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do uh, with your clients and customers and, and the area of specialty in the insurance industry where, where you focus? Well, what I focus on is basically financial literacy. And I'll tell you the reason why. Because before the pandemic, there was a crisis in America. The average American is one, was one to two paychecks away from being homeless before the crisis. One out of three Americans in debt before the crisis. The average American family cannot even handle a $400 emergency before the crisis. The average college student gets out of college with about $25,000 debt before the crisis. If they're pursuing to be a doctor or a lawyer or a professional, anywhere from 100,000 to 200,000. The average college student changed their major at least four times. And the average person who went to college in America is still in student loan debt in their late 40s. And last year in America, all car loans and credit card loans combined did not surpass student loans. But yet we're in one of the richest countries in the world. So I always tell people, we don't have a money problem, we have a literacy problem. So my main motivation is to show people how to pursue their purpose in financial education. And that consists of a lot of things. It consists of, you know, uh, financial aspects. It consists of insurance. It consists of trust. It, it consists of corporations, the whole nine yards. But everything is really about retirement strategies and financial literacy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I think that's so important because, you know, oftentimes when you hear when you hear in insurance, right, you're not necessarily relating it to financial literacy. You're not relating it to, you know, really a, a, a sound plan. You're just like, you're just thinking, oh man, I'm gonna have this insurance and it's something I'm gonna spend my money on and it's gonna, 
take this. But can we delve a little bit deeper into that to, to how insurance, I mean, how insurance and you mentioned trust, how insurance and the banking industry and investments are related? <laughs> man, let me tell you, I, I, I kind of feared this, man. I, I knew it was going to be hot. I mean, we just started and it's burning up already. <laughs> OK, man. So, you know, it's funny because what I found is that I would say maybe about 85 percent of Americans have the wrong interpretation of insurance. 85 percent. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever you use the word insurance, that's the operative word insurance. You can't use insurance without attaching it to something. I can't just say I got insurance, but insurance on what? On what? Right. So when we think about a car, that's automobile insurance. We know that. When we think about a home, that's homeowner's insurance. We know that. So what we see is that the word insurance is attached to something. But most people in America today, when we say life insurance, the first thing they think about is death or someone transitioning. Yes. However, it's called life insurance. Now, there is a particular type of life insurance that's called final expense, burial insurance, specifically for death. Now, one thing about final expense, I think everybody should have it. Final expense is it pays out within 48 hours. You don't need a death certificate. And traditional life insurance can take anywhere between six to eight weeks to pay out. And a lot of us don't know that because most agents, when they're giving people insurance, they don't educate them. They just give, give them insurance without even telling them that, hey, life insurance on average take at least six to eight weeks to pay out. Now, we see people throughout the United States doing GoFundMes, car washes, bake sales, cook sales, standing on corners, holding signs of very loved ones. I just seen it last week. I seen a woman and two kids standing on the corner holding a sign to bury their child. Wow. And that grieves me a lot. But the lack of financial literacy is so much needed in America that a person with final expense, Rod, can get covered for a little as 50 cents a day. Hmm. Add their kid for about 12 cents a month. So do you think that same woman, a man that was standing on that corner that knew that they could cover their kids life for 12 cents a month, they would stand on that corner? No. Do you think people would do what they're doing? They don't know. So it's a lack of financial literacy. So my whole objective is, is to get people to understand the true meaning of life insurance. It's exactly what it says. Life insurance is for your life. Here's the true meaning of life insurance is to transfer wealth. Boom. It's a transfer of wealth. When we go back in history, we see Ray Kroc. You look at the documentary, took monies out of a life insurance policy to get McDonald's off the ground. Mm -hmm. Walt Disney took monies out of a life insurance policy to get Walt Disney off the ground. We see Master P, he tells everybody, my grandfather left me a $10,000 life insurance policy. I turned it into a $250 million empire, right? And then we see other people that use life insurance. So I really like to get the point across and let people know that life insurance is to transfer wealth. That's what it's all about. And most Americans don't even have the proper understanding of that. And, and that's once again, a lack of financial literacy. That's why it's so needed. Mm. You know, I, I tell you, you know, we, we are in an age now, see this, this, this conversation could go in a whole different, I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring it back. Cause it makes me want to continue to to delve in and even ask more and dig deeper. But we're in an age now where, you know, there is at least a, a heightened awareness for uh, creative ways to, to, to sustain, to earn income, to be entrepreneurial, uh, to, to find, you know, different, different ways to, I guess, you know, say this, to say, quote unquote, we're building generational wealth, right? Like people say this all the time, but it's, it's very rarely, that you actually hear these policies actually mentioned in those conversations. Very rarely. You're right. I, I, I um, there's a, a there, there's a, um, another book that I, I, I read recently by Eugene Miller. You know, this, uh, yes. yeah, the, the Eugene Miller book, um, Closing the Racial Wealth Gap, right? Yep. And in there, there's a, there's a quote that says, um, Wealthy people plan three generations ahead. Poor people plan for the weekend. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So uh, what, what you're saying, you know, as far as relating, you know, that 
policy to your wealth building strategy and not just the wealth building strategy, but your wealth sustaining strategy is very, very crucial. And uh, I, I know you're, you're one of the most knowledgeable and, and, and acclaimed individuals in, in the space. Uh, and you know what, I, just what you said was so important because what we see is poverty starts, well, put it this way, wealth starts at above $150,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And then poverty starts a family of four making about $32,000 a year. Mm. 15,000 for one individual poverty in America. Mm -hmm. So there's a big gray area, about a hundred, $100,000 gray area, which means most people, 5% of the people out there witness the wealth lane. Yes. And when I gave you those statistics in the beginning and said before the pandemic, the average American is one to two paychecks away from being homeless. That's before the pandemic. That's not right now currently, it's much worse. One out of three Americans in debt before the pandemic. When you really think about that, what is this current generation going to pass to the next generation? There you go. Yeah. So life insurance is a requirement. It's a requirement. But as we go along, they're going to know why it's an, why it's an, uh, a requirement and why everyone needs it. That's it. You got to you got uh, I'll take one of your quotes, you know, got a plan for the lifetime, not for the lunchtime. You better believe it, man. That's I love it. it. <laughs> I love it.